Let's look at the format of log records in the ARIES protocol. We're going to want to be able to roll back individual transactions, which means we're going to want to be able to get all the log records for a single transaction and get them connected together. In order to achieve that, we're going to have a field in our ARIES log records called the PREVLSN. Previous LSN is what it stands for. It's the LSN of the previous log record written by this transaction. And it's going to mean that the records of a transaction form a linked list backwards in time through the log, as in this picture. Okay. Now, when we look at a typical log record in ARIES, it's going to have an LSN, which is the log sequence number. Every uh, log record has an increasing LSN. It's going to have a prev LSN to link it to other log records for this transaction. And it's going to have a transaction ID. Those three things are going to determine you know, where that log record is in the log and how it connects to other log records for its transaction. Now, every log record can have one of multiple types. It can be an update log record, a commit record, or an abort record. It could be a checkpoint record, which is for log maintenance. Or it could be a special kind of log record we'll learn about called a compensation log record, a CLR. That's going to be used to log undo, as we'll see. And finally, we'll have a sort of advisory log record called an end, which is going to end the commit or abort processing. What we're seeing on the left here is an example of an update log record. So it's got an LSN, a pre lsn and a transaction ID. It's got a type, which says what kind of log record it is. And then, because it's an update record, it's got information to allow us to do redo or undo, the page ID involved, and then a location on that page, which is an offset and a length, and then the before and after image of that offset length range of bytes on the page. And that will allow us to do redo or undo. So the thing on the left is actually an example of a uh, update log record, um, but any other log record would have at least the first four fields as well. As we said, the update record on the left has sufficient information for redo or undo. It's essentially a physical diff of the bytes on the page. There are other encodings that can be more space efficient than just writing down a change in bytes. And we won't cover this in this class, but be aware that in a commercial uh, relational database and in the original ARIES protocol, they had more compact representations for these diffs uh, that would allow undo and redo. OK, in addition to what's in the log and the log records, ARIES is going to maintain some state in memory. So because the state's in memory, you uh, should understand that it's um, we could lose it and things will be all right. It's reconstructable from the log. In some sense, it's a cache of information that we already know in the log. Uh, but it's going to make the running of our uh, transaction protocol, our recovery protocol, make sense. There's two in-memory tables, a transaction table and a dirty page table. Let's go through them one by one. The transaction table has one row per currently active transaction. Okay, It's got a uh, key, if you will, of XID. So think of this as a hash table where the hash value is XID, the transaction ID. And in addition to the transaction ID, we keep a status, which is whether the transaction is running, committing, or aborting and a last LSN for the transaction. It's the most recent LSN written by the transaction. It might be in the log tail still in memory, but it's just the last action of this transaction. It's got an LSN, okay? This is gonna allow us to go backwards through our prev LSNs in the log is by starting with the last LSN of the transaction and working backwards. The dirty page table is going to have an entry per dirty page currently in the buffer pool. So the hash key, if you will, or the primary key, is the page ID. Again, in memory, this is probably a hash table hashed by page ID. For each page in the buffer pool that's dirty, we're going to keep a rec LSN. That stands for the recovery LSN. That is the LSN of the log record which first caused this page to be dirty since it was brought into memory. Okay, So you can imagine a page is brought into memory by the buffer pool it's currently the same as the page on disk, so it's clean. And then some action, which generates a log record, updates the page, and that sets the rec LSN for that page ID in the dirty page table. It's now a dirty page, it has a rec LSN. And that page might sit in memory for a while. There may be many more updates from subsequent LSNs, but the rec LSN will stay the same. It's the rec LSN of that first action that dirtied the page since it was brought into the memory. And then the page might be flushed to disk, and it will be not only not in the dirty page table, it won't even be in the page table, okay? And then the process might start over again. Another transaction might read that page, it's brought back into the page table, yet another transaction might update the page, then that LSN resets the rec LSN in the dirty page table, okay? So a page goes into the dirty page table when it's first updated in memory, it leaves the dirty page table when it's flushed to disk, and it can come back into the dirty page table later if it's written to again. 
Here's one slide that contains all the state of the ARIES recovery protocol. In the log, we have log records, and they have various fields that you should understand. In the database, we have data pages, as we always have had, but each is going to have a page LSN, which is a pointer to the most recent update to that page in the log. There's also going to be something in the database called a master record, which we'll talk about later. It's going to allow us to recover the database after a crash. And then in memory, in RAM, we have our transaction table, our dirty page table, our log tail of log records that have yet to be flushed, our flushed LSN, which tells us the last log record that was flushed to the log device, and of course, our buffer pool. If you understand the connection between all of these things in ARIES, then you probably understand how recovery will work. Okay, And you should go back to this slide. It's a great reference after we go through the recovery protocol and convince yourself that you understand why each of these uh, fields is kept in these various places and how they're used during logging and recovery. So this should be a reference slide for you. Definitely a good thing to study as you're thinking about exams or if you're thinking about an implementation of ARIES.